oh, that's going to be interesting. My our, my cat just decided to uh, <laughs> to join us. Okay, um, yeah, this is Toby. <laughs> we'll be probably be seeing a lot of Toby until I do something about it. Uh, he's decided to to come. All right. Um, so welcome here, everyone. Thanks uh, to Black History Manitoba. Uh, just uh, some housekeeping things, uh, so we all have so things go smoothly. Uh, this is an open book um, trivia game. And so we're all getting all the answers uh, to the trivia questions are in a Global Mail article. I, I sent it out an attachment by email uh, to everybody. And um, if you didn't get that email, um, we're going to pop a link in the chat here. And I'm sorry, I, I can't. I can't talk about the cats in my face. I'm, so. I'll be right back. Laura, you know his pain. <laughs> okay, I'm back. That is so distracting. <laughs> yeah, so uh, thank you uh, to the Globe Mail. Uh, thanks to Doug, Douglas Tripp, the Globe Mail's marketing content single copy sales manager, who gave us consent to, to use this. Uh, the link I sent you, sorry, the PDF I sent you uh, in the email is uh, from the library, oh, wow. so we got it all legit legitimately. Uh, but if you don't have that handy, um, yeah, we'll, we can pop that in the chat for you. And um, we typic we used to open these with a land acknowledgement. Uh, my friends have asked uh, me not to do that and to offer a harm acknowledgement instead. Uh, the, the language they used was uh, do not acknowledge our land until you search the landfills. Uh, there's no reconciliation in treating our women like garbage. So I'll uh, I'll just read the read the harm acknowledgement from the families, um, and then we'll uh, get going. Um, in solidarity with the Harris, Myron, Nipanak families, and with the family of Buffalo women, we acknowledge that leaving sacred remains in a city dump is an affront to their in inherent dignity. We acknowledge that refusing to search sends a clear message to those who prey on Indigenous peoples a message of invitation to dump their victims in the trash over in Winnipeg where they won't even be looked for. We acknowledge that we need to be better than this and we commit to living out in our day-to-day -day lives the calls to justice specific to all Canadians, 15.1 through 15.8 from the National Inquiry into MMIWGS. And I'll add 2S plus to the end. That was the language that when the thing was written. Uh, thanks for putting the links in there too. Yeah, if you want a copy of that uh, for later, uh, there's an open letter that's uh, been sent out to event organizers. Um, all right, so a uh, little bit about the format. Uh, we are gathering on Zoom to play the game, but we're going to be playing the games on our phones, and uh, the answers are in the article. So to play the uh, game on your phone, uh, you'll need to click on the uh, the link that's uh, kind of in the shared screen, crowd.live.vni72. And once you get logged in, it'll just ask for your name so that we can keep score. And uh, in regards to keeping score, that's because we have a prize. Um, we've got a copy of uh, Sleeping Car Porter by Suzette Marr. Uh, we, we picked this up from uh, Tusume, uh, which... Um, I believe is Winnipeg's only black owned bookstore. Um, like I said, uh, we're here to learn together. So if uh, there's another black owned bookstore, I'm here to be corrected. But uh, yeah, we get uh, non trivial trivia. We get all our books uh, through Tusume uh, because we want to support uh, support Val. Val's store is awesome. Everything's lovely created, and she's always willing to special order too if you're if there's something you you want. Um, Actually, Black History Manitoba have a good library too. Do you guys want to talk about that? Or yeah, we actually travel around with uh, many, many books. If you could see my kitchen right now, if I turned the camera around, you'd see stacks and stacks of books. We we travel around and we set up a display at all of our events just so that individuals can see the vast array of resources that are available now. Um, and a lot of them are available through TUSAME. And we also source other um, vendors such as Urban Intellectuals and we get the, the book sent 
us. So yes, if you ever see us out and about, come check out our display. We try to change it around so you always see brand new titles. We get individuals to take videos of the, the books and it's a great way to, to get some additional additional books in your library. Who doesn't love to read? And it is I love to read my book. Okay. Well, thanks. Just a one quick shout out to also to McNally Robinson, who mm. they helped us out when we first started our book drive as well. Mm. There we go. All right. Um, okay. Just talk about the scoring um, quickly. Um, because it's open book and because we're here to learn, uh, we want to get all the answers right. Okay, so answering correct is a given. Uh, so you don't get you don't score points for answering correctly. Uh, you score points for answering quickly and correctly. If you answer quickly and wrong, you get no points. But but the whole idea is that to take the time you need uh, to find the right answers. Uh, they're all in the they're all in the article, and um, we're we're going to learn a lot a little bit more about about the show as we go. Um, we'll be updating the score as we go throughout the thing. And if you're getting behind, don't get discouraged. Uh, there's something at the end called uh, the lightning round. <laughs> the lightning round is not open book. It's uh, it's a question that the answer is sort of obvious. So that's the one question where you um, score points by answering um, correctly and quickly. <laughs> I'll just explain it this way. Um, yeah, the, if you're way behind, you can catch up in the in the lightning round. And if you wait until I'm done asking the question before you've answered, you're probably going to lose. Okay, don't. <laughs> you got to answer quick because there's a lot of points up for grabs. And on your phones, you're going to see the points uh, dwindling as you take as you take time. So don't don't get distracted by that. <laughs> Focus on this because we're here to learn. But uh, yeah, the points do kind of kind of dwindle as as we go. Uh, right, that should answer most of your questions. But does anyone have uh, have questions before we get going? So feel free to unmute and ask questions or feel free to unmute anytime. We do want to highlight, um, especially um, in particular voices from people who were on the show. You know, so if you want to share about your experiences, if something comes up during the quiz or even if it doesn't come up and you're eager to share, uh, the more interactive we can make this, the more, more fun it is. Okay. All right. I'm not um, seeing any questions. And uh, Rhonda, you'll have to watch the chat for me because I'm on another screen working all the controls. So if there's a question in the chat or you just encourage someone to unmute because that'll that'll work better. <laughs> all righty. Um, so one, two, three, go. Here we are. Okay, so the first question. Uh, most of the Porter was set in which historic Black Canadian neighborhood? Saint Antoine in Montreal, known now as Little Burgundy, uh, the Ward in Toronto, Africville in Halifax, or Hogan's Alley in Vancouver. Okay, and uh, when I said we're here to learn and here to learn together, that includes myself. If I mispronounce anything, I, I would welcome uh, correction. So especially um, names of peoples and stuff. Oh, I'm seeing lots of votes coming in here. We got, we got, uh, yeah, eight people have answered already. But take all the time you need. <laughs> so you can see the points dwindling on your phones, eh? 80 points, 79. 78, 77, lightning round, they're gonna go down much faster. It's like, <laughs> so, okay. I'm just gonna get a feel for how many are playing because um, it's uh, there's extra accounts logged into the Zoom. So I've got answers from uh, nine people. Uh, is there anyone else waiting who needs more time? If you are, just make yourself known. Okay, so when now when we see we've got nine answers, we know it's time to time to move on. Okay, so um, the correct answer is uh, Saint Antoine. So congratulations, everyone who got that right. Um, that would be uh, most of you, most of you. There are are a few that didn't, and you're it's all lighting up on your phones now. 
Okay, so moving on to question two. Why did Arnold Pinock spill coffee on his manuscript before his first meeting with the CBC to discuss the show? <laughs> hey, he spilled the coffee because he stubbed his toe. <laughs> the coffee table. Uh, B, while sipping coffee and reading, Arnold's dog jumped on his lap. Um, C, because he wanted it to look as though someone had found it in their grandparents' attic. This manuscript, it was like some sort of ancient, ancient tome from, a, from an attic somewhere. Or, or D, no coffee was spilled. It was actually tea. Okay, so uh, yeah, don't guess. Take all the time you need because uh, we're here, here to learn. Watching the answers come in. Okay, these are these are the votes coming in. It's kind of kind of mixed. Someone's right, someone's wrong, or maybe we're all wrong. <laughs> I can tell some people are going for the quick points if I get by taking a guess. <laughs> okay, we got nine answers. So um, yeah, the uh, the correct answer is uh, C. Uh, he wanted it to look as though. Um, manuscript was found in someone's epic. Very that's creative, it. Arnold. Very creative. <laughs> it is. And I don't know if that's what that's what uh, pushed it over the top for the CDC, CDC guy, but uh, whatever he did. <laughs> so thank goodness for that. Hello. Okay, question three. While researching for the show, what event stuck with Mr. Pinock, making it more to me than just a show? Okay, so... Uh, and one of these answers is right. And I can see votes coming in. Um, a, he received a handwritten letter, which was sent to encourage him by A. Philip Randolph's grandson, Jesse, who'd heard about what Arnold was up to. Uh, B, he held the hands of a woman in their 90s who grabbed him and said, tell our story. Um, C, he learned that his great aunt's life had been saved thanks to care from the UNIA clinic in St. Antoine. Or D, when he visited Little Burgundy and, sorry, excuse the typo, and found a plaque recognizing uh, Garbite UNI member Louise Langon, Malcolm X's brother, mother. Okay, so give me some time to think about that. I spent a year in Montreal. It took me two years to spend it because I, I came back to Winnipeg to work um, in the bush as a tree planter. But I, I lived in um, Saint Herbal, which is just down the street from uh, in that neighborhood. Oh. I'll have to go back there now that I've learned this history. Absolutely. Yeah. Because at the time, yeah, I wasn't. Uh, I had no idea what kind of richness I was adjacent to. Oh, sorry, there's nine, there's nine answers. Okay, uh, the correct answer is B. Uh, so congratulations to, to most, most of you folks. Um, a lot of the fun, because I, I get to learn a lot when I'm preparing these quest questions, uh, is making up wrong answers that sound like they could be right. Right. Which is actually where a lot of the learning is. So I just want to uh, talk about that for a bit. So Philip uh, Randolph actually didn't, didn't have any children. So that's uh, that's kind of interesting. But I, I tried to make that uh, you know kind of kind of plausible. Uh, yeah, he's he, uh, his wife Lucille and himself. Uh, they they didn't have any children, and the the part that stuff in D is actually almost almost true. Um, there's no plaque. Okay, uh -huh. and uh, you know, and that wasn't inspired to the show. But there actually is um, some history uh, with Malcolm X Malcolm X's mother, which is fascinating. So there's an article about that. Uh, that uh, we can pop in the chat for for the keeners. And um, speaking of keeners, let's uh, let's find out who the keeners are. 
Okay. I can't see it on my on my end, but we should all see the uh see who's winning in the phone. Uh who who's ahead? Okay, can you see it now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um <laughs> so, so who's winning? Uh, we see uh, that, I believe that's Sylvie that's in oh, first wow. place. <laughs> wow. Oh, I can see it now. I, I just had to switch that <laughs> and look at look the actual Zoom. Wow, 271 points. Wow, this is, uh, this is pretty job, close though. <laughs> I, yeah, this is pretty close. Don't don't feel bad, uh, VIN72. There's a thousand points at the end for the <laughs> during the lightning round. So you can, you can certainly catch yeah. up. Nobody's ever out of the race, right? No one's ever out of the race. <laughs> this, this is tight. I can see this, uh, yeah, especially in the middle of the pack there. Okay, thanks. It was fun stuff. All right. I'm just going to reorganize my tabs a little bit so I can be a little more interactive. Okay. Okay, moving on to question four. How did Alfie Woodard, who became a creative anti to the team and then took on Faze Row as Madame, get connected to the project? A, she responded to the casting call, just like everyone else. Uh, B, uh, Bruce Ramsey recruited her through a process that involved creating Faze character and writing it into the show. Uh, C, through referrals when the CD brought in Black Entertainment Television. Or D, uh, Pinoch arranged for her to virtually Virtually, virtually, <laughs> it's a typo of our story, uh, virtually <laughs> attend and bless their work. Uh, Zoom life was wearing thin. So this this was all recorded during during the um, during the lockdown. And, um, you know, people, the planning team were meeting on Zoom a lot. So they um, maybe <laughs> they, they brought her in to uh, encourage the team. All right. Okay, we got nine answers. Uh, the correct correct answer is D. Yeah, so that uh, that that thing at the end there that really did happen. All right, so congratulations to everyone who got that one right. Okay, question five. There are more than one correct answer here, so oh. if you find uh, one of the ones that matches, um, lock it in. You get get full points for either one. Okay, what did Woodard say about Winnipeg when comparing it to other black lead sets? A, I knew it was, I was in the sweet spot of people at the top of their game. Um, B, sometimes you don't, just don't know what you're missing until you get it. Uh, C, I've worked in LA, I've worked in New York City, I've worked in Vancouver. Winnipeg might be small, but the work done here is top notch. Or D, uh, good food, good weather, good people, especially those folks from Black History Manitoba. Which I know they met because they were... I, I saw one of them uh, tinkling the keyboards there when I watched the show. <laughs> I hope it's D. <laughs> I hope it's D too. <laughs> Should have just answered D because of that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll sacrifice our points for it. Oh, sorry, there's nine answers? Okay, uh, the correct answer, unfortunately, is not D. <laughs> correct answers are uh, A or B. So uh, full points if you got, uh, if you picked either of those. And uh, most of you did, so congratulations. Uh, just see um, see who's ahead here. Uh, okay, so SA still in the lead, middle of the pack, still, uh, still tight. And uh, whoa, we have a, Big change at the end there. Becky's dropped dropped to last and BIN 72 were in front. And again, yeah, the, the, this is going to all change in the lightning round. So everybody is still in it. Everyone's still in it. So uh, that, that's <laughs> exciting. Thanks for, thanks for sticking in there. Yeah, don't uh, don't give up. You can always nope, don't give up. come back. And you already are coming back. You've moved up one spot. Eight, <laughs> uh, eight, more to, eight spots to go. I can see uh, this changing. Okay, moving on to question six. What did Black Entertainment Television stress when they came on board? Again, there's more than one correct answer here. Uh, A, they'd be calling the shots 
it would be their way or the highway. Uh, B, there should be shorthand that the black community would instantly understand. Um, C, they stressed that they didn't want us to blacksmain our experience or uh, D, that they are on board to support and don't want to interfere. Now, there may be four correct answers, but two of them are in the article. <laughs> Michael, what if, you, yes. what if you touched your phone by accident and it answered? Can you delete that for me? <laughs> or... <laughs> oh, no, I can't. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I'd have to reset the entire game. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. You know when your phone goes dim and you touch it to bring it oh, back? No. Yeah. Don't and do you that. Know what else is, is happening? There's moving targets. I go to click on something and then my phone decides to update. And then I've, I've sent a oh, no. I've phone people fax machines like because it's because <laughs> the numbers are sorting themselves. Like the I yeah. Gotcha. Well, perhaps your your phone knew what it was doing, Lori, and maybe it picked one of the right answers. Maybe it did. Okay. Uh, yeah. one of the right the right answers are B and C. And uh, only one person chose D. <laughs> Was that you, Lori? <laughs> All right, you did. Yeah. <laughs> no, no need to edit the scores. Okay, you, you're you're in that point fair and square by accident. So, <laughs> All right, question seven. In the article, how did Ronnie Rowe, played Zeke, uh, describe how the series centered liberation while still recognizing trauma and oppression? Uh, more than one correct answer. Again, uh, A, one of the alluring aspects of this project, it focuses on ambition. Um, B, the five main characters are each pursuing greatness in their own way. C, it's a celebration of the diversity of Blackness in Canada. Or D, it reinforces the idea that Black people aren't monolith. There isn't a singular narrative about our experience. All righty. See five answers coming in. A lot of them are correct. You're a smart bunch. As I've been doing this over the years, it's been a couple of years now, or going on three now, I'm finding that more people are answering um, correctly than at the beginning because I'm writing better questions. Like, uh, so we've, uh, yeah, we've, we've uh, learned a lot along the way. Well, we're doing this. Sure. We got nine coming in. Okay, so the correct answers are A and B. Uh, okay, so it's we're about a 50 50 split here. And uh, let's see, um, yeah, we got five, uh, five correct and four incorrect. So that's uh, either people are uh, Russian or I didn't write the questions as uh, well as I should have. So let's see who's ahead. Um, SA still in the lead, but still uh, only up, up by 100. We're Ace and Michelle are keeping keeping up there. Rhonda, Tabitha, oh, <laughs> and Becky and BIN72. We're, it's like back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> it's exciting to see. Okay. Okay, question eight. Uh, who used the phrase we were our authentic selves to describe the experience of gathering in each other's backyards for off such socializing. And this I want to hear more about <laughs> if anyone was a part of those experiences. Okay, um, one correct answer here. So A, uh, our friend Bubba Bay, or B, Owini um, Adekai. Please help me uh, pronounce that if I mispronounced it, and I probably did. Olanike Adelie. Olanike? Yes. Okay. Adelie? Adelie. Adelie. Either that's close or you're giving up on <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's close. Okay. That's what I, I, what I remember from what I heard. No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear it directly from her mouth, but uh, that's yeah. what I heard on set. <laughs> okay, cool. Mona Trow or, or Ronnie? Ronnie Rowe, please, Zeke. Okay, we got uh, four quick answers coming in. So was anybody here part of these backyard parties? It happened during uh, during the lockdown, so there was no gathering inside, you know, in in a pub or a restaurant uh, after after the set. But uh... so uh, yes, I wow. got to go on set on a few of those days, and uh, my son Jaron played Teddy in the 
in the series. So we got to spend a lot of time on set. Yes, we were on our, in our trailers a lot, um, but the way that they had the trailers centered, it was almost like a, we created a little city. So um, we were able to meet outside our trailers and they yeah. on set, they were very mindful about the type of food they were serving to the cast. Um, they were going to black owned restaurants oh, in the city for catering, oh, and, which was really fun. And um, some of the sets were at actual houses. So mm -hmm. we would all be in the, in the actual backyard of the of the houses that were on set and it was really a great it was like we were at a, a cookout or something and so we were sitting next to say um this alfred woodard and taking pictures so it was really a great great experience and they were again very mindful about um if there was any harsh um content on set that day yeah. they would have um, areas set up so that individuals could come and kind of unpack what mm -hmm. what went on that day so it was it was a great experience all around and and yes we truly felt like family by the end of the yeah. <laughs> end of end of the shooting mm. yeah they, they touch on that in the article there's some there's some heavy heavy content in the show that would be hard and uh, one thing that surprised me I, I didn't think of it right I, um as someone who's not in that industry but uh they would have to go through that heavy, heavy scene 17 times to get it correctly, right? You know, so it's like, it's not just, uh, not just what, like, it, it's not like just you're watching it, you're re-experiencing it again and again and again. And uh, yeah, it was really uh, good, to, good to read in the article, um, you know, uh, the care that they took. Yeah, they, they definitely took the extra time to ensure that individuals felt safe at all times while they were on set. And as, as you can understand in some of the footage that you would have seen in the actual series, that there was some language that was used, um, some hurtful words that were used. Um, and in order for it to convey realistically on, on the series, it, it had to be acted extremely well. So you could feel like you were drawn back to that same time. So um, they made sure that they did create spaces to um, decompress and and make sure that everybody felt felt okay by the end of the days. Probably a good time to check in on the score. Let's see, oh my goodness, yeah. The lead for first is tightening up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we're getting getting close here um, to giving away a book. Okay, while filming the scene where Pinock ran to catch the train as it huffed away, how long did it take to back up the old prairie dog steam locomotive after each take? A, uh, 15 minutes, uh, B, 20 minutes, uh, C, 25 minutes, or D, 30 minutes? Okay, there's eight answers coming in. Oh, there's there's the ninth. Okay, I was going to give a little hint, but <laughs> there we go. Yeah, the correct answer is uh, C, 25 minutes. Uh, congratulations wow. to most of, most of you. And that's fascinating, because when you think about how much time it takes and how long you're on set and how many, <laughs> how many different takes you have to do in a scene to have to spend 25 minutes backing it up every single time must have definitely put the pressure on Arnold to make sure that he got it right. I know, I know, like, that was me, like, it's like, I'm doing this seven times, like, <laughs> it's going to be, I mean, it's gonna be harder, to, I would have caught the train on the first take, like, I'm not going to catch up on the second take. <laughs> exactly. It was only going to go downhill from take one. <laughs> That's right. That's right, there's nowhere to go but down. Right. Hey, right, question 10. After filming a short church scene, Ernesto Griffith, Pastor Hayes, was asked to deliver an impromptu sermon to the cast. What song broke out afterwards? Uh, a, Down by the Riverside, uh, B, This Little Light of Mine, uh, C, Oh, Happy Day, or uh, D, Lift Every Voice and Sing. And uh, I hope someone was there because I want to hear about this. 
it sounds amazing that this this just happened spontaneously. You know, so, um, okay, we got eight correct a eight eight answers. Most of them correct. I wasn't there, but I work in the same office as Ernesto, and we did get to talk about that. He <clears throat> is such a soft spoken, kind gentleman, and he said the the atmosphere is what got him into it, and it was just it was like being there, like mm. it wasn't. It wasn't like they were acting anymore. They were literally at a sermon, at a church service, feeling the gospel of the time, which is more spiritual and more um, just a family circumstance. So he, he said it was an amazing experience and just the joy that came out of everybody just by having that little part, part that little song Um made a big difference in the, the atmosphere and the way that that day went. Okay. Did he mention um, what his sermon was about? Like, was it a little impromptu thing to inspire the cast? And um, Yeah, I think I, yeah. he didn't say, he didn't say exactly what it was, but basically yeah. that's what it was because you, you have a lot of downtime and they just figured, you know, this is a way to hype. And the, the scene itself was a little strong. So mm -hmm. They just thought, well, this would be a good way to lift and come, kind of take that cloud away and give mm. something of joy to that scene and that day and make everybody oh. feel a little bit different. Oh, I love that. Kind of ties into what Rhonda was saying about, you know, the care for the care for the people involved in the project. And it's just to notice that this would be a good thing to do in the moment. And we have these people together. Let's not, why not uh, help each other? Exactly. But that's, that's what they did. So um, just a little bit of Winnipeg history. Pilgrim Baptist is celebrating their 100th centennial this year. And they're the one of the oldest Black churches here in Manitoba. And when they're talking about back in the day, like especially in the uh, 60s, 70s, they were that kind of hub because when people were migrating here, they had a very sense, a, a large sense of not feeling safe, not feeling at home and comfortable because you're in a place where there are not very many people who look like you. And one of the gathering places for a lot of Black people at that time was church. And Pilgrim Baptist made that effort to make them feel comfortable, make them feel at home. Their roots are, are more of a Scotian. So they've got a lot of... Um, that particular history within the congregation at the time. And a lot of people, that's how, when you come to a, a different land, a different place where you're not home, how you can feel a little bit of home. Hmm. And you said the oldest church in Manitoba, would they be in the hundred years? Canada's not that old. Like, would they be in the top 25 um, in, if you're ranking the oldest churches in Canada? Yeah. Watch the uh, Yeah, maybe. I never looked at that yeah, maybe. concept, so it's possible. <laughs> I'm sure they'd be up there. They'd yeah. probably be up there. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, sharing that little bit of insight. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad this came up because I was curious when I was reading that. I was like, oh, I want to hear. Want to hear more about it for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what happened? after they filmed the last of the Stardust Room scenes when the director called cut. Uh, a, the band kept playing. <laughs> B, the dancers kept dancing. C, I mean, jumped on stage to hype the crowd. <laughs> or D, all of the above. Okay, and, uh, oh, we got nine already. Yeah, all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone share about that? I, I, that sounds like such a powerful moment. Sadly, it wasn't on set yeah. that day. My but knowing <laughs> Junior Massey as yeah. the character, I I can one hundred percent believe that that was that went off exactly as as wow. he had stated it. Yeah, I imagine they the the set we did get to walk through and see the set so they built the stardust room so if you look back and I'd encourage everybody if you have an opportunity um, to go back and rewatch the the series and really study the backdrops and and the sets because 
they were so meticulously done mm. that I think that was overlooked when individuals were watching because we were so engulfed with the characters that we truly didn't um, appreciate how much time and effort. And because they were hoping that this series was going to go on and on, um, the trains, they built those um, in on, on set. Uh, the set is on Pacific Avenue in one of their... Um, I can't remember what the building is called, but there's a huge um, a set display area on Pacific Avenue. They left it there. Um, the Stardust yeah. Lounge, they had created that indoors as well. Um, a lot of the exterior shots, depending on which ones you're looking at, some of those are actually indoors, not even outside. But if you were watching it, you would never know you would, that you were in a back alley or something. It was just immaculate, the work that they did. Yeah. on the set so they allowed us to walk okay. through and see yeah. and the stardust lounge particularly was it's so beautifully done it's so beautiful and so i could i could understand that once the music was playing and the band got going that they were immediately transported back to that time and the energy probably just took took them away so oh, yeah. I fully yeah. it. well i mean i've seen i've seen what, what you two do <laughs> music like i just <laughs> But just, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks so much. Okay, a um, little bit about the lightning round. Um, this is uh, pretty tight. Especially, like, like that's next. Lightning round is next. Okay, so uh, yeah, 50 points between first and second and uh, 400 points between first and last um, or 500. Yeah, this uh, there's a thousand points up for grabs. Uh, the answer is pretty obvious. Uh, the answer is not in here. Okay, so put that away. Uh, go with your gut. If you have not answered on your phone uh, before I finish reading the question, uh, you're probably going to lose. Lori, <laughs> watch out for those phones that slip. Make sure your brightness is on. Okay. We don't want to. We don't want any any glitches. Okay. One, two, three, go. What's on Black History's Month calendar for tomorrow? A. What's Black History Month? Uh, B, the network brunch, 4 p.m. at Fort Crown's restaurant. Uh, C, a polar bear dip at the Forks. Or D, nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. It's the Lord's Day. Okay, uh, let's see. Well, surprisingly, everybody got, got it right. Yep, the correct answer is B. And uh, let's see. Okay, we're gonna finalize the quiz. Okay, the winner is Ace and Michelle. Oh, it's oh my gosh. Really <laughs> switched at the end. Okay, uh, don't end the end the Zoom. We got to get this book to you. Okay, so um, Rhonda or Nadia, do you know? Can you get in touch with Ace? And Absolutely. Michelle? In your circles. Okay, so we, we can. I don't know how this is happening. Yeah. <laughs> this They're the this... reigning champions <laughs> again. <laughs> Hmm. This is not their first rodeo. <laughs> well, thanks for un unmuting. Uh, why don't you give yourself a little little victory speech here? Congratulations! I am shocked. That was awesome. My oh my gosh! One point. One point. That's that's Good job. kind of amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I um, love this, and Michael, you're so good at this. Thanks. Yeah, it's awesome. That was so fun. Thank you both so much. Uh, you know how much we love you and appreciate the support that you show. So that book is definitely for you. Sylvie, we will definitely find a, a prize for you as well because you did a, such a good job. You were you were in the top for so long, <laughs> but they, they bounced you right at the end there. But yes. everybody, thank you so very much. And of course, to Michael, you are amazing. And we just cherish this partnership and this relationship ongoing. It was one of those COVID finds that we take to heart um, your yeah. family. So anything that we could do to help, please let us know. As always, we are here. For those of you who don't already know, yes, we still have a couple more events for the month. One of them is a networking lunch tomorrow, brunch. And today, this evening, we have our youth networking event, which is um, led by some of our young people on the team. They are going to be having some panel discussions, a couple 
some things to eat. Um, they're having music performances and they're just talking about current events and how we are communicating as a youth in the city and through the schools, how their black student unions are working and just a way to better connect. So it's a great event. It happens at five o'clock this evening. They're at the, oh, uh, sorry, table. Rhonda, help me. What is it called? Table space? At 196 Osborne. Yep, there, see, things stay. Some of the, every, now, every now and then I got it. Um, so it's a free event. Come down, enjoy the company of these young people. They put on a, such a great, great event and we wanna support them. And then tomorrow again, we are at Four Crowns, which is our friend Ravi. There's a networking. We are working on our very first speed networking event. So you come, bring whatever you need, your business card, your QR codes, whatever you want. And we are going to give you five minutes to do your elevator speech to everyone in the room. And we are going to do a fun networking brunch. There's great food, there's entertainment. We've got some local artists and a, a comedian that will be providing that day's event. And we are partnering with our friends at Zuike. So there'll be lots to give away and we're just gonna have a great afternoon. Then we wrap up the month with our closing banquet which we are going to be hosted by the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. And they of course do a fantastic job hosting us and it's going to be an exceptional event. We have a guest speaker from the Haitian community. Haiti is, is celebrating their 220th year of independence. They are one of the first independent countries and we want to celebrate with them. So our guest speaker will be talking about that. And tickets are available on our website, thmwinnipeg.com. Get them soon as we sell out every year. And I can't even explain to you how delicious the food is at that event. So please share, tell a friend, come on down and join us. I think I am going to crash right now. So <laughs> I will put it back to Rhonda and Michael. Thank you again, everybody. I hope this was fun. Take in the series if you can. I think it's on available still on CBC. If you look up whatever streaming device you have, I'm sure you can find it. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, it is on It is on Gem. I've been uh, re-watching it uh, to kind of uh, inspire myself for this event. So uh, just stick around for just a sec. I want to get a picture for my, for our, our Instagram of all of us on zoom. Uh, it's all too blurry. Thank goodness. <laughs> I also wanted to thank our funders for black history, Manitoba, um, Canadian heritage. So thank you very much, Sylvia and the team, and also the province of Manitoba, the Maltese cultural secretariat. They also provide us funding. So um, we are so thankful to our all our sponsors and our friends and allies. Um, Virgin Radio is, is a great supporter of ours and we just love them so, so very much. <laughs> and we're so excited that um, Michael has mentioned and we hope everybody's okay that we share this on our Black History Manitoba channel as well. So individuals can play along and we're we're all about getting the learning out to the, the masses. So the more we can get individuals involved in fun learning, I think this is a really fun and unique way for us to learn together. Open book, I mean, how much easier can the test get? Right? <laughs> and if you don't know the answers, I mean, we're all learning at the end of the day, so we're all with it. So thank you very much again to Michael and the team at Non-Trivial Trivia. As Nadia said, it was, it's been a great friendship and partnership over the years and we're just so happy yeah. these opportunities. Well, thanks. And one, one thing really quick, just for the keeners, if you're not a keener, tune me out, but uh, keeners, if you scroll down on your phone, it shows you everything you got wrong so you can go back and read if you want to if you really want ah. you really want yeah yeah there you go all righty awesome yeah. thank you everyone have You're a great welcome. afternoon and we hope to see you soon again and we'll do this again it won't be february we'll do it sometime in the next couple months i'll get michael on it hey. get all better right, soon what's that Ace? get better soon that's not fun <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
Oh. I sound horrible, right? I know. I'm going to get off here. <laughs> Bye, everyone. I Thank thought you. you said get better food. <laughs> you complaining about the menu. <laughs> yeah, Daddy. <laughs> food and food. Both, both. <laughs> Have a good one, everyone. Okay. So long, everyone. Thank Bye. you all for joining us. <laughs>